Well, it might well be early in the season here at our new club sport in Lisbon, but I don't think you can get a much more important game than this. We return for our second leg fixture against Nottingham Forest in a playoff to reach the Europa Conference League group stages. A competition we're expected to reach the quarterfinals in. We rested our whole team at the weekend and dropped points as you saw frustrating in the league. But after a brilliant 0-0 draw at the city ground, can we complete the job at home to make it through at the expense of English opposition? Yes, hello and welcome along to part 53 of The Coach's Head with me, Daniel. We're at a new club with a new lease of life and a new challenge on the horizon. Domestically, it's a big job as we try to catch Benfica and FC Porto, who are both on perfect records already. Whereas today, we've got Nottingham Forest, we've then got a deal with the side in third place just three days later, and we've got transfer deadline day in the end of the window, courtesy of our director of football. So it's going to be a busy one. I'm sure it's going to be eventful. But are we going to have some extra European money to play with? If you want to stay up to date and find out and you're looking forward to it, then please do put a thumbs up on the video. For those of you that weren't here last time, we drew 0-0 away at the city ground in a boring but brilliant performance. We also managed to drop points in the league, having rested everyone ready for this second leg. Hopefully it will be worthwhile. Let's go and have a quick look at the transfer centre before we start though, because one of the two boys that we were looking to sign has now come in. The director of football is still negotiating with Guy Zahori, but he has agreed a deal now for Callum Doyle. We mentioned it before, bit of a shame that he's the highest earner at the club, doesn't really make sense, but he's a good player and will make our rotated team for Sunday stronger. He's not registered for this, having joined midway through the tie. Another Englishman, which is nice for us, and at 29, still in his prime, still a good player, and 1.4 million is an excellent transfer fee. So very happy with that addition. Let's go and get straight through to the fixtures though because there is one thing that matters tonight. That is getting through to the Europa Conference League and then we can worry about all the rest after. And interesting actually, Porto are the holders of this competition. So if we get through, it shows a Portuguese side can win it. I have no idea what the director of football is suggesting. You can see Forrest have gone full strength for this one. Lewis Potter, Amduni, Alanga all in from the start. But what is going on? He's suggesting that I play my backup goalkeeper, who's nowhere near as good. He's also telling me to bring in two or three others that make sense. But why would you tell me to drop my keeper for this? I just don't get it. Let's go through to the team selection. This is the rotated side that played at the weekend. We're going to get it back to full strength. We'll be back in a minute to confirm the 11. Well, as you can see, Gabriel Silva has not quite made it. He's fit enough to go on the bench as an emergency. Basically, if we're a goal down, we'll throw him on. But I'm hoping we won't be in that position. And as we've said before, the weakness in this team is holding midfield. Redondo is in. He's a solid player, but he's not going to set the world alight. And with Braganka over the hill, we don't really have that option, which is why I'm hopeful that the Zahori deal gets done. For this game, it is the 11 you would expect. It is the 11 that I think started the first leg. I'm pretty sure that's exactly right, isn't it? Alemdar in goal, Kirkes and Arace in the fullbacks with Gabia and Laskowski, the central defensive duo. Redondo and Telehofsky in the holding role, or Tavio ahead of them. And then it is Fatawu and Rivera out wide, John Hervenhoff through the middle. And hopefully a successful day and a chance at group stage football. Let's see if we can get the job done as we host Nottingham Forest in a battle of the big boys in the qualifying round. I just noticed there on that screen that five players, including Fatawu, weren't happy with our team sheet. And I'm trying to work out why. Is it just because I didn't play a half bit silver? Because otherwise, I picked the strongest 11 players we've got. So that doesn't really make much sense. We know a lot about this Forest side. Omabama Deli in at central defence. The three attacking midfielders all were substitutes last week. They're in to try and complete the job this time. And on the bench, Jamal Lewis, another familiar face. But. Let's go and tell the lads they're doing okay. No reaction whatsoever. I just need a performance, boys. I really need you to show up. The Europa Conference League phase is so important to our job early in the season. Why is the ground so empty? For a home to Nottingham Forest, there is no way it would be this empty, surely. Maybe they're not big fans of this competition, but with five gone, I'm desperate to get through. And I'll take a game that was just as boring as the first leg, if we can nick a 1-0 win or something out of it. Any win on the night and we're through. 
We draw, we're going to penalties. So let's see if we can find a way. 20 minutes gone. We've had the first shot on target, but neither side has offered anything. Very similar to the first leg, though Gabby Hutt has picked up a knock. And now Otavio is as well. This asks me a massive question. Do I gamble this early on Gabriel Silva? Yes, I do. There's no bigger game. If we need to take him off for extra time, so be it. Gabby has done for as well. I don't know what we do with him. It was a gashed leg. So it's not something that should get worse. I think I might leave him on for now because the only replacement is Sano, who we saw what happened at the weekend. He cost us the equaliser. I want to stick with the tried and trusted and the experience. Though here comes Eki Anduni. Out to the left-hand side. Well intercepted by a racing. Now Fatawu can break against the rivals of his former club. Down the right-hand side he goes towards the byline. Two on the edge. Cuts it back. Telehovsky. Redondo. Blocked shot. Brilliant save. Rivera now. Tries to recycle it. And Christensen blocks behind for a corner. The first really big chance for Sporting Lisbon. It ended up being two, didn't it? Gabriel Silva is immediately on corner duty. And that's not a bad delivery. But it's headed away by Rivera. And unfortunately, we don't make it count. It's a bit difficult, that, because we don't have the most physically imposing team. So we're not able to dominate from set pieces, which is something I do rely on a bit. But we are starting to get the upper hand. With five minutes to the break, though, we need to make it count so Forrest can't get in level. Redondo being forced backwards here. And from the throw, we've ended up back on halfway. Though it's out to a racing. Will you try and turn back on that left foot? No, he doesn't. He cuts it inside, but it's a poor ball. Redondo, though, nicks the ball away. We get away with it. Abdurrahman again. Finds Gabia. Good possession. Good territory. But where's the chance? Dennis Telehovsky tries to create it. I think Fatawa was off anyway. But Declan Dunn is flying off his line to stop that. And it remains nil-nil. This is a long old highlight. You just feel something's going to happen here. Kirkes heads away the long goal kick. And Rivera can try and break down the left. Does his man brilliantly. Finds Silva. Good ball into Hervenhov. And he's offside. But lovely touch from Gabriel Silva there. That's what we've been missing. It stays nil-nil. But we're definitely on top. But as we reach half time, we haven't made it count. And that might be the crucial news tonight. We go through the dressing room. I'm going to say I'm not happy with what I've seen because I need a reaction. John Hervenhoff is anxious. I'm going to say I've got faith in you to make the difference. You're inspired. Can you show it in your finishes, please? Because I could really do with a sneaking through here. It was never going to be a comfortable tie either way. It was going to be nervy for both sides. Is it going to prove that way again? An hour gone. And I think we're going to be relying on the rest of the bench to save us. But I don't know what's there for us. 25 minutes remaining. It's Lewis Potter on the right. Throw into Felicimo. Don't do this to me. Rivera makes the challenge, but only delays it rather than stopping the cross. Vuskovic has got it 30 yards out. Forced back to Kelly. We're camped inside our own half for the minute. Alanga skinned his man on the left-hand side. Crossing the box. And it's 1-0. Zeki Amduni has given them the lead. And now we've got big question marks. Can we find a way through? Or are we going to be heartbroken? I think we know it's going to be the latter. We're going to go attacking. We're being warned about. We've got one yellow card from a suspension. Do you know how important this game is? It doesn't matter. There won't be another game if we don't get through. I'm going to put Silver up front. Hervenhoff's been crap all season. Zakarias comes on there. I'm going to put Pedro Mendes on on the right. Switch for Tawu over. Just got an inkling that that might work. And then at the back, Gabby is struggling again. Let's just bring on Volison. We've gone attacking. There are 12 minutes plus stoppage time. Can we find a way back in? We've been the better team in terms of chances created, but we've not looked like scoring in this second half, to be honest. And Forrest are now sitting behind the ball. Alanga holds it up for Felicimo. And he's got acres of space. Where's our number 10 gone there? Zakarias just not getting back in at all. And Nottingham Forest trying to do the sensible thing. Keep the ball on the edge of the box. Wait for the chance. And Kelly plays it into midfield. Looks like they're going to nick a second on the break here. Because Alanga's got himself in. And he has. Forrester through. Disappointment on the night for us. That 0-0 draw at the City ground wasn't a great result as it happens. We're going to go out of the Conference League. Expected quarter final. Out in the qualifying stages. This could be a very tough season for us to face up to. Fataru's picked up a knock now, which is going to affect the weekend too. Nottingham Forest are through. Sporting Lisbon have bottled it. What a shocking start to the season. Through the dressing room we go. I'm angry and I need to know what that's done to our job prospects. Because early on here, 
I'm gutted with the tie we got, but we have really not made that count. Injury news, how bad is it? Otavio, six weeks. Vitaru, two weeks. Money for the Conference League, but we are out. And Gabia has picked up a knock for two weeks as well. What do we do after this? Because we've got out. The club vision won't be great. We failed to reach the latter stages, but they understand we had a difficult draw. The supporters aren't that happy. But now we've got to qualify for the Europa League. We've got to make it count in domestic football. No need to rest anyone anymore because we've not got Thursday nights to play with. Maybe that helps us in the domestic season. But this is a very worrying start. We've now got to look ahead to Sunday evening. We're not going to have much more in a transfer window because there's not a huge budget. There's not a lot of wage budget left. Probably just that one signing coming in. And that's going to be frustrating. A few days to go. Let's get ahead to the weekend. And then it's all about deadline day. Well, we return for Sunday's game as a young centre forward has been brought in who is never going to make it. I can see why the fans are disappointed. Gabriel Silva is now fit. We'll see how many of these boys from Thursday are because now there's no need to rest any of them. Yes, we've got another game on Friday, but five days is enough of a break. And there's a transfer deadline date between now and then. So let's see what they look like. Uh, three players obviously injured from that match. A few others out as well. So let's go and get the team adjusted. We'll run through it in a second. Well, here is our squad for today, which will see a debutant in the form of Callum Doyle. It will also see Gabriel Silva start in a number 10 role and young Pedro Mendes on the right. If we're going to be here for two or three years trying to build this club back up to where it belongs, we've got to get this guy to his top of his potential. And with Fataru out, it's a real opportunity to do so. There's a few missing out on the bench, but of course, we've played as strong as we can. And the only issue is, can we get John Hervenhoff scoring regularly? Don't know what it is in this team. It's just not happening for him. So let's get through to kickoff. Three changes made, all enforced. Hopefully, we won't need to make any more during this one. Well, our new number five starts at centre half as Oliver Enze have started brilliantly. Ten points from their first four games and they'll be looking to keep their unbeaten start up here. We are unbeaten as well from R2, albeit with those annoying drop points last time. I want to see an improvement, boys. I want to see a reaction. Please do not slip up again. If we start slipping up in regular league fixtures, this is going to be a tough season. With us out and not playing Thursday night now, we've basically got no excuse not to qualify for the Europa League. Getting an improvement this season and being back in that top four or five, there's no argument. We have to do it. As Hervenhov, I tell you what, I'm not sure he was offside there, but if ever there's a sign that a striker is not confident, He's been put through one-on-one -on -one and look for a pass to a 17-year-old kid. Shoot. Show that you've got the potential. Show that you've got the confidence in front of goal. That is really, really poor and worrying, to be honest, as Dominguez gives the ball into Silva. Carmelo at the back. He's got time on it. Finds Almeida. And at the back, we've been quite, cut open quite easily there. Laskowski does get back as the ball's across the box. But obviously, as much as they're good players, this is a new centre-half partnership. That's also a rocket of an effort off the woodwork. There are going to be moments where we're a little bit insecure. Kirkes has picked up another yellow card. He's picking up plenty of them early this year. And we've also got the same with Redondo too. As this ball's into the box. Headed away as far as John Hervenhov, who just... The old John Smith's advert. Volleys it out for a throw-in. Looking to go over the shed into the other houses' gardens. Not the most promising 20 minutes or so, it's got to be said. The morale is a problem, and I know it's going to take a while for us to settle here. We could have done with an easier qualifier to give us a little bit of confidence, but this is what we've got to deal with. We've got to find a way to win when we're not at our best. And these injuries are costing us, because those individual moments of magic from a Fatawu, they're disappearing. Having to play Hervenhov up front instead of Silva, as Redondo gives it to Rivera. Do I maybe go for the 4-4-2? As Rivera in, across the box, is well blocked. Cleared away as far as Redondo again. Rivera into the area. Finds Gabriel Silva. Turns onto his right foot. Should mention as well, with deadline day coming at the end of this episode, linked with a move away, Silva, to Real Sociedad. That offer comes in. I mean, he's going to have to be replaced, surely. Rivera finds Silva again. Looking like the man to unlock the door. Finds Rivera. Pedro Mendes is on the right. He's been found. There's two in the middle. Silva's one of them. Great goal. But the flag's up. It looked close. I thought he was just on. But if the flag's up, it's normally offside. Unfortunately, Pedro Mendes with his run of assist does not continue. The goal's disallowed. It stays nil-nil. To be honest, that would have been harsh on the visitors. 
Well, here we go. Half time. We have just had the better of the game, but I'm finding it really hard to get these boys motivated and keep the confidence in them. Redondo again is nervous there. Do you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go for experience here. Let's trust one of the older heads who's been there, done it all. Daniel Braganka is going to come on at half time. He can do 45 minutes. It's not the type of game where we need that physicality. We just need someone on the ball to control it. And hopefully he'll be that man. We know Gabriel Silva's not going to get through the full game. We know there's a few others not in great shape. We're 65 gone. Let's make a few other changes and just hope. We're going to go Silva off for Zacharias, who got that goal in the last game. Zerkes, or Kirkes, sorry, off for Volken. And then do we take off Rivera as well? I think we have to. Vasco Souza will be on there. It's four changes in total. You're starting to see here, we've gone positive with our mentality in this save. And... I do wonder if that's an issue. I generally go standard and work up, but I find we're not creating too much space in behind. As Carlitos puts it in to the back post, it's almost got worse. They've hit the woodwork for the second time, and for all of our attacking dominance, they've had the two best chances in this game. As Telehofsky, I'm going to throw in some encouragement after this, because look at the morale. It's all over the shop. Braganka, though, that's what we bought him on for. Switches to play quickly to get us in. Suza to Zakarias. Two in the middle. Hervenhoff's there. He's missed from a yard. But Pedro Mendes saves the day. The 17-year-old. What would we do without him? Honestly, I don't know. He's so, so good. We're going to praise the lads now. You're one up. Have a bit of encouragement in you. There's no confidence in this team. I don't know if it's just that they're not in tune with us yet. They're not feeling confident with us at the helm. But... We could really do with a slightly better mentality here as Mendes finds a race in. We're being saved by a 17-year-old kid, Laskowski. Braganka again. Done what we brought him on for. He's spreading the play again. Hervenhoff forced wide. Has support inside from Souza. Options in the middle, but he went back. Finds Hervenhoff. That's better. Off the woodwork. Hervenhoff just cannot score to save his life. That was a really good move. That's the sort of football we want to be playing. With 10 minutes to go. I'm looking at options. What have we got? Telehofsky possibly off. And we'll go for Continella. I think freshen up that midfield. He's not much weaker in terms of the defensive side and the physical side. He's just not quite as good on the ball. But we've dominated the game. Again, the expected goals is higher than what we've produced. I just think if we can get the attacking players in form, we're going to be on for a good season. As it is, we still win the game. 1-0, a clean sheet. Job done. Very happy. The 17-year-old saves the day again. And now it's over to the director of football. You've not got the money from Europe to play with. Apologies for that. But can you give us anything else for deadline day? Still waiting on the Zahori deal. But Mendes, the man at the moment. As long as we keep him, things should be all right. Well, I'm not going to get too overexcited because it's not the director of football that's made this offer. So presumably it's a youth player. But Augustin Flores is the latest sign of a new sign-in and he's not very good. A finisher. Sticks finishing for a striker again. Jeez, what is wrong with this year? Every striker just can't finish. It's baffling, really. Let's get through to deadline day. Hope there's more offers. Maybe a couple at senior level. Or at least get this guy's a hoary deal done. Well, here we go. And we return to a league where the transfer deadline day circus is alive and kicking. Daniel Braganka, club legend, linked with a move away. And we're being linked with Celtic's Nicolo Ravella. But 31, if we don't get Sahori, I'd definitely take him for this season, put it that way. We're going to take part in the day. We're also linked with the youngster that we saw a minute ago. Kubik's been linked with a move away. Rorado the same. Let's just take part and see what happens. A reminder, a little bit to spend now. Oh, the director of football must have moved that himself. I haven't seen them do that for ages. Probably not since the January update. But still, we're in a good position here. Zahori is the deal we're waiting for. He must have loads of offers. He's got Lil and he's probably waiting for the English sides as well. So let's see if it gets done. We'll be back if there's any news. Well, the first big news of transfer deadline day is bad news. Guy Sihori has turned us down. Despite the fact we offered to double his wage from Legia Warsaw, I presume that means he's going to Lil then. Unfortunately, we haven't got the holding midfielder we want. It's the one position we really need an improvement. So let's hope that rumour of the player from Celtic is not just another one of those made up ones by the media because he was a player who would definitely improve us. Well, I've got to be honest here. I'm becoming very concerned again because despite the fact we've had media questions all day about different holding midfielders and all sorts, 
We've not had any sign of any offers with two hours to go. We've got Flores coming in, who's a young player who's not going to make a difference. The striker who can't finish. And it looks like no offer's going to be made. The remaining money is just going to be wasted. And we're going to be sat here with a weakness in holding midfield. Now, I guess the argument from the club is you didn't reach the Conference League group stage. You failed in your objective. We're going to wait to see what you do with our squad. But that's not going to help us. We've looked unconvincing this year. And if Braganka doesn't go, yes, for one year we've still got him. But he ain't the solution physically at his age, is he? Let's get through the last two hours. Just hope for a miracle. Fingers crossed. Well, it doesn't look good. The deadline has passed. And to show you a little bit of perspective, Benfica spend 23 million on a centre half on deadline day. Half of their overall summer budget. They spend 46 in the end. Braga trying to catch the big boys by signing 17 players including a fair few first-teamers, Andre Gomez being one, a 27-year-old midfielder who's probably better than what we've got, Hugo Albert, a striker who's a good level player as well. So other teams adding quality to their squad, other teams making themselves better. And I'd argue that in some cases we haven't done that. Now, the director of football has done a good job in some regards. Got Jens, Arakovic and Kevin Alvarez, three of the big earning old boys at the back off the wage bill. And bought in Laskowski and Callum Doyle, who are a young player and a peak age player, both doing pretty well. Other than that, though, there's not been a huge amount done this summer. No real improvements to the attacking areas of the team. But I guess you have to probably say as well, there's not been any big losses to this squad. So maybe they're just hoping that with a similar team, we can find our way back up. Now, I would expect us to get into the top five. I think that is a minimum objective this year. The season preview has us fourth still level. But then we look at some of the other teams. VTSC, they just won 4-0 against uh, Estrella, the promoted side who we drew against. So I show that we're a little bit off. I would expect Benfica and Porto to be well away. And Braga have won every game apart from the two against those top sides. So when we come up against them, we'll probably find the same problem. So the aim for us is to be best of the rest. We've got to be top five. We've got to try and push on. But are we going to be at the top? I don't think so. Have we got European football to distract us? No, we haven't. It's been a bit of a disastrous episode, hasn't it? Only one goal scored out in qualifying in the Europa Conference. And if we do slip in the league now, especially being behind in terms of games, we're going to be in a little bit of trouble because we've not got the, well, we're doing well in Europe to fall back on. We've already failed on one front. The Portuguese League Cup and the Portuguese Cup now become important. Can we push on to that next level? Maybe try and win a trophy? I don't know. Let's have a look at the schedule and see when we're going to be back because it's not European fixtures now, is it? I think we're going to wait a little while. We're going to come back in mid-October where it seems like we've then got a run of rotten games. The first one, Champions Benfica at home, then VTSC in a decisive League Cup tie, presuming we can beat Australia this time around. I think they're the two we're going to come back for and then we might even do the two after with Braga and Porto because all the big games come at once there. If you want to stay up to date and see how we get on and you did enjoy my disappointment this time and abject failure in Europe, please do put a thumbs up on it. We managed to sneak a win in the league, but it is not convincing at the minute. Hopefully we can find a way to recover because the fixtures until we get to the next episode, they're not that bad on paper, are they? If you want to stay up to date and find out how we do, subscribe and turn that notification bell on. We'll see you on Saturday for the next installment to find out how we get on against the champions. In the meantime, it's a new season with Southend United tomorrow. Come and join me for the transfer special. That playlist is up in the eye above. We had a thrilling climax to last season, which you can find up there for now. There's also links to the Twitch channel where we've got plenty of live streams and to the football podcast where we'll be live on Friday night. The new championship predictions are out and we'll be watching the first game together over there. Thank you very much for joining me though for your support as always. It's disappointment in Europe this year. But will that give us an advantage in the league? I'll see you next time as we hope to find out.